In the spirit of shadiness, we're going to leave the Los Polos Hermanos good old fried chicken for a video of fake cards. I know. So this is uh, not really going to be much visual action. I'll show the cards a little bit on camera, but this is mostly going to be an audio style Rudy video. And, um, well, to answer the question, Rudy, why don't you discuss counterfeit cards anymore? Rudy, it's been like six months to a year since you even talk about counterfeit cards. Make a counterfeit card video. Hey, look, there's foil counterfeit cards. You know, all these things. You know, I... Look, you know, to for the people who don't want to stick around, they just want to do the old thumbs down, make sure you thumbs down four times or only click the thumbs down button an even number of times in my videos. It works better. And just to, to summarize everybody who just wants to move on with their life and doesn't want to hear the long talk, um, to this day I still have no real concerns of counterfeits, at least for myself. Um, I do still have concerns of counterfeits to, unfortunately, um, a lot of regular players and regular people around the world because those are the people who are targeted for counterfeits, you know, the backpack dealers, people on the old, uh, you know, Craigslist, you know, Backpage, Silk Road, Fugazi websites, you know, people who would, hey, psst, come here, hey, in the corner, hey, hey, man, um, got a guy's cradle, only uh, 50 bucks today, you know, you know, stuff like that, the people who are bidding on certain, maybe, you know, I, I've seen stories, I had someone contact me a few months ago with uh, even a Goodwill auction, where they're, one of the pictures had like a piece of power in it from a couple months ago and they bought it. And and they bid on the Goodwill auction based on the premises of that one particular unlimited piece of power. Which, so the, instead of bidding, you know, what they felt was 50 bucks worth of cards, they bid like $2,050. Well, obviously, that one card was fake, everything else was real, and it became a problem. Now, of course, Goodwill is very good about it. Um, they didn't give them a hard time. They were good people. I mean, obviously, it's Goodwill. I mean, they didn't really care. Uh, but overall, that, that was really the point of the counterfeit conversation that I've discussed in the past. And then I'm discussing right now. And I don't think that's really changed. Um, I don't feel that major stores are usually targets of counterfeits and problems because they, they perform audits like I do. You know, I tell everyone that all the time. When you send me, the more expensive the collection, the more excited I am. Because it's a big deal. When I make a good YouTube video, we get to share the story. But at the same time... If you've ever tried to scam somebody, if you have that mindset, you're not going to contact a large magic vendor. You're not going to contact me. You're not. It doesn't work that way. I've had I've had that happen. I've had people kind of sell me a small collection and then slip like one fake unlimited piece of power in with other real pieces to see if they could kind of get that bonus money. I've I've had that happen in the past, but overall, it's just not a real threat to me. I don't, and again, maybe that's my cockiness, and maybe that's a sign that the, the fakes are so good, I can't tell, and I've been just cutting checks for fake cards, you know, I, I don't know. But in, in my personal opinion, I just don't feel the counterfeit market and the fakes of very high-end old magic is really a threat. Now, before we go into looking at these cards in front of you all, one final comment, I do feel the threat of fake cards is a real thing on new cards. I do feel that whatever a new hot shock land or fetch land or standard card, regular non fancy etched version, I do feel those regular cards will be and continue to be counterfeit and targets of fraud and scams. Because again, those are targeted to players who just want the cards as cheap as possible. And, of course, the counter-argument, for those of you who probably aren't even around anymore um, watching the video, but the counter-argument is, well, Rudy, all these cards should be, you know, the most a magic card should be is 50 cents. You know, a card shouldn't be over a dollar. It's just a piece of cardboard with things. I get that. That's been an argument I've heard since I was a little kid 20-something years ago. I heard, I've heard that in middle school. Well, oh, God, I'm old. Almost 30 years ago now? 30 years ago? God. Gotta keep my walker next to me. But, you know, that's... I, I, I feel the threat on newer mid-range 10, 20, 30 dollar cards is really where the real threat is because it targets a different demographic of people who spend money in the player base versus the people spending large amounts or the stores or vendors. And I feel, unfortunately, they are the ones that are kind of seeked out and targeted, which is why you always got to kind of always, and again, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. 
No, he didn't wake up and just happen to get the best email from some Egyptian prince or god in the middle, you know, of the Great Pyramid of Giza who just found a stack of black lotuses. You know, maybe they did. Maybe it's just a stack of tacos. We don't know. But just use common sense. Be realistic. And that alone will guide you for most of the way. All right, let's pause there. Let's look at these cards real quick. Um, first of all, before we even get to these cards, they're hilarious. They're so bad, I don't think anyone's really fallen for these things. I don't I don't know how anybody could fall for these things. So this is a batch of counterfeit cards that are all from Onslaught. Okay? Even counterfeit basic lands. What? Like, like what? Who counterfeits basic lands? And I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. The colors look beautiful. The cards look really nice for counterfeit cards. You guys ready for the backs? Are you ready for the back? I know, giggity, don't, just be nice, you all. Come on, professional YouTube channel. Let's flip her over. I, I know, that's a giggity, I know. Look at look at this, you guys ready for this? <laughs> look at the cards. Look at the margins, and look at how bad, you can see the pixels. I know, it's just, it's so bad, it's funny. That's, again, this is more of a meme video today, folks, but, and then, of course, let's, let's look at this foil. There's all, it's an onslaught foil. No shooting star. You know, it's kind of funny because these foils are, these cards are really old. These counterfeits are very old. And you know what's really funny about it, folks? This really old counterfeit actually reminds me of the etched foiling that we have in, in the cold foils from Flesh and Blood and the etched foiling we have in Magic the Gathering in 2020, 2021, which is crazy because this has that light metallic type different film over it that reminds me of an old version, or I'm sorry, a new version of the etched foiling, but it was made a really long time ago. And, you know, a patron sent me these to me, and I, I just kind of cracked up. He just said, dude, you'll have a good laugh with it. And I just wanted to share, because I, I just thought they were hilarious. And, I, you know, the colors are way off. I mean, this artifact, the browns are way off. I mean, look, here off camera, hold on. Here's an actual Mox Diamond. Look at the brown border. Like, this is poopy brown. This is polished turd brown. Big difference, folks. It just, it really cracked me up on just the color, the contrast, and the off. And it just, I'm like, you count, who counterfeits commons and basic lands? Like, it's just so bad. Like, oh, oh, is that a rare? Oh, man. I know everybody's trying to get their counterfeit Tetris over here. Yeah, it's called Tetris. Get over it. It is a counterfeit rare Tetris. Oh, oh look at this now. We got this flipping uncommon towering giant ball ballot. Uncommon from worth absolutely nothing. These fake cards, somebody probably paid the same amount of money as for the real ones. Like, it's just a li Oh, explosive vegetation? That's got to be like 50 cents in 2021. Now, why you would buy a fake one for maybe 10 cents versus... I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but I, you do get these awesome backs, though. You get these awesome backs. So, like I said, not going to be a long rant here. I just wanted to kind of swing back around for you all. The summary of this video again is, yes, the counterfeit conversation from everything from the card world to video game cartridges and video game chips and NES that are counterfeit to comic books that are reprint knockoffs to they purposely age the paper or a currency or, or oh, that's a good, here, I got a good one for you, on graded currency, you know, like, for example, you guys know I'm into the, um, the graded U.S. Federal Reserve notes, like large notes, silver certificate, gold certificates. You guys saw that one video. Well, you know, one segment of currency I don't get involved in is actually U.S. Confederate currency from a long time ago. And my rationale is because there's just so much counterfeits in that section. So I never get involved with that stuff. I always like the actual, you know, large note U.S. Federal Reserve things. Those are my favorite. And I get them graded, of course. I actually don't deal in any raw uh, old currency. But there are sections of different markets, just like toys, just like many knockoff. There's knockoff Legos, you know, that are always going to have counterfeits and be a problem. But I just... You know, if you do your due diligence and you don't fall for the, you know, the same old, if, you know, hold on, hold on, hold on. My loss is your gain. <laughs> I, my, I found these in my great-grandparents' fish tank attic next to the adult bookstore in Rudy's third floor basement. And I just found a box of all Time Walks and Ancestral Recalls. There were bricks of them. Like the attic was made out of Power 9. Like, we make fun of this stuff, but, you know, I make fun of it because when we laugh about it, it stays in your head. And if even one person out there listens or has a friend who heard this video and can say, hey, man, just be careful. 
in, you know, if it saves one kid or young person from being scammed, it's all worth it. Because remember, the unfortunately, the people who go for those things are the people who have less resources or lower income, and they're just very excited because they really just want to have a piece of something special or an old card. And you got to respect that kind of hustle. You know, we've all been there. I know I was. I'll never forget when I got my first revised dual land in middle school that I had to pay $10 for. And I thought I got scammed. My parents made fun of me, you know. And, and actually, I think that was a volcanic island, too. Not even a plateau. Hilarious, isn't it? But the point is, you know, I understand when you're in certain financial situations or a certain socioeconomic class or certain income level, you know, you want to take those risks and you get real excited. You know, you get that dopamine hit and your heart rate elevates if you think you found something that can really, you know, propel you forward or help you skip ahead. I get it. I do. It's, it's human nature. We're all wired that way. But again, there are no major shortcuts in this world. It is a slow, long grind. It's a beautiful grind, but you got to have a good mindset. you got to do the right thing. you got to just work hard and stay the course and just slowly chip away. That's the way it works. And, you know, I, and the, the, the funny thing is when these fakes were made, you know, this was probably early 2000s when Onslaught came out, maybe around mid to, or 2000, what? I don't know, 2001, 2006 range when these were probably manufactured. I forgot the exact release. Oh, wait, I'm sure. Did they even have a date? Yeah, 2002. There you go. I was, eh, right in the middle. I said, what did I say? 01 to 05? Yeah. So, you know, when they made these counterfeits, somebody put the time and effort and resources to actually buy this product, the ink. And for the record, back then, ink and materials and products, do you guys remember what it was like in the 90s? To buy an inkjet printer and buy ink cartridges? I don't... Does anybody do that anymore? I don't think so. But understand, I mean, we're not... Even printing fake stuff was expensive. These cards were not a penny a piece to make. Even fake ones cost money, especially on a small scale. It could actually cost $25, $50 to a dollar a card. And it's just... You know, somebody out there, they made these. Because they saw a market that somebody was going to pay for them. And, you know, it sucks. But it is what it is. And if, they, if, if you're just a kid who wants to play the game, I get it. I'm not, I can't bust your chops for it. But most people who use that argument, they, kind of, they always have that little evil guy in the back of their head to say, you know, hey, maybe I could, you know, maybe just sell a few of these things. Even maybe at a lower price, you know, maybe, oh, I don't know. Maybe I get a bunch of, uh, what if I bought a brick of, uh, I don't know, maybe a little, uh, little, little piece of candy. Maybe I get a little, maybe a hundred fetch lands for, maybe a hundred uh, onslaught fetch lands for maybe 50 cents a piece. You know, and uh, maybe I'll just, you know, keep some and maybe sell some to my friends for maybe three times the price. Maybe sell them for two bucks a piece. And my friends will be like, hey, two bucks for a fetch land. That beats paying 40 a fetch land. And now before you know it, you went from innocent, I want cheap cards to... You know, the money and the concept of greed and behavior starts to slowly shift. And when behavior shifts very slowly, it tends to not feel wrong because it's a slow adjustment. Slow adjustments tend to be more accepted by the brain, even when they're in the wrong direction. Hope you guys learned something today. As always, be cautious. Use common sense. If you're ever unsure, sleep on it. Always give it a one 24-hour cool-off period and when you're making decisions in life, even if it's fake cards. And always remember, folks... Don't take the shortcut, you know, don't, don't try to hose somebody, don't steal someone's cards, don't, in the long run, you will come out ahead and come out better by just doing the right thing. I know it's not as exciting and dangerous, but, it's, you know, this is the real world, folks, a lot of good things, and you gotta enjoy it, make sure you, know, enjoy everything.